Thanks. Thanks for coming. I hate the sun. The sun's a piece of shit and I fucking hate it. It always shows up. Hey man, it's hot outside. Why don't you take your shirt off and go to the beach? Because that man tits and low self-esteem, son. Fuck you. That's why. I hate the sun. Is it your fault your baby died of heat prostration in the back of a car in a Walmart parking lot? No, it's the fucking sun. Is global warming your fault because you drive around in your SUV and throw trash bags at the window? No, there'd be no global warming without the sun. The sun's a piece of shit and it's gotta go. <laughs> we all know it's time to get rid of the sun, okay? Let's stop pussyfooting around the issue. The earth is mostly water. The sun is made of fire. Fire is the enemy of water. If you like the sun, you hate the earth. Why do you hate the earth so much? Why don't you just go live on Mars? I've had enough of the sun. All right? The sun just goes away at night. Where does it go? Nobody knows. Daylight savings time. The sun thinks it can control time. Stephen Hawking can't control time. The sun thinks it's better than Stephen Hawking, a known crippled genius. I have had enough of living under this fiery fucking Al-Qaeda. And you're like, why does he want to destroy the sun? Is it because he's fat and pale and has a lot of money invested in street lamps? Not entirely. No. All right? The sun is manufactured by the sunscreen people to sell more fucking sunscreen. You wouldn't need sunscreen without the sun. That's a goddamn scientific fact. I have had enough of the sun, all right? Godzilla's from the sun and he hates Asians. Now you hate Asians. What's wrong with you people? It's time to get rid of the sun. Read about it on my blog, fuckthesun.org. I'm asking you who's with me. Who's a patriot? Who supports freedom? Who's with me? Destroy the sun! <laughs> Well, you're fucking stupid. We need the sun. We need the sun to live. And that right there is how Fox News works. Just a bucket-headed moron gets on TV and yells a bunch of unsubstantiated bullshit. All of a sudden, you're choking out your neighbor because the American flag pin isn't larger. I would rather watch a man shit into a camera lens every week than ever watch Fox News ever again. I really would. I'd rather watch a man squat German website style, bicycling a Nikon, just half an hour a week, and you're like, Simon, they had that show. It's called the Oscars. No, because to me... A man shitting into a camera lens more relevant than anything Shepard Smith or Bill O'Reilly or anything like Lenny Riefenstahl light fucking propaganda. It's so veiledly racist, too. It's always like, is Obama doing as good a job as a, a normal guy? It's always stuff like that. <laughs> like, every time Bill O'Reilly talks about Obama and he starts a word with a letter N, you know, the censors are like, shit, is today the day? Because they fucking know! And why is it always perky blonde bitches with ridiculous cleavage and false eyelashes giving me the news? The news is shitty, okay? I don't need it from someone who's never had a bad day, all right? I, if I want the news, I want a guy with a black eye, a mustache, and a scotch going, things are fucked! Ah! That's the news, all right? That's the news. The news should be, this is CNN. Ah! And babies on fire are shut into piles of money while poor people who need cancer medication watch. My favorite part about the news is the people with opinions, though. They're the best. They don't have a driver's license, shoes, or teeth, but they got fucking opinions. And they wander into town out of the Kentucky Blue Mountains with their banjo strapped to their back and their lucky quarter on a string to put in the payphone and get back so the government can't use the money for a fact of their social programs. <laughs> and they always call up and go, first of all, Mr. O'Reilly, putting. I love your show. Second of all, Darlene, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Sorry, she forgets how to listen good when her eyes heal. Second of all... <laughs> and then it's always like, blah, 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 a bunch of racist shit, cause God says so, click. What? I love these motherfuckers who claim to speak for God. They're my favorite. You see them, they walk around with signs like, God says this! God says that! God hasn't said shit in 2,000 years and his publisher is getting nervous, okay? <laughs> So stop walking around with signs. Why is it always negative shit to like, God hates fags? I thought God didn't hate anybody. That was the point. You just get kind of scared because sometimes you kind of want to hug a dude without a shirt on. So you made a sign and went down to the mall. I understand. Life is frightening. Well, what kind of an arrogant motherfucker do you have to be to believe you know what God says? Really, you're the one God chose to speak through you with the Walmart sweatpants and the Dale Aaron Hart shirt who thinks one Nickelback song sounds different than other fucking Nickelback songs? You're the guy! <laughs> I don't care what you believe. As long as you don't hurt anybody, you could fling yourself in a bath full of cocoa butter with a carrot in your ass. Just upload the video. I don't care, but I'm tired of people bringing up their religion all the time. Stop it. Stop bringing it up. Some guy said to me after a show once, he goes, you're an atheist? I go, yeah. He's like, I'll pray for you, man. Fuck, okay. <laughs> That's like me going, you're a Jew? I'll have a ham sandwich just for you. It doesn't apply, fucktard! 
And then he says to me, he's like, well, you got to know you ain't going to get in the kingdom of heaven. You don't want me in heaven. You don't want me at your house, motherfucker, let alone heaven for eternity. I will wreck the party for everybody. <laughs> I won't take my shoes off. I'll track dirt all over the clouds. I'll bug the people playing harp. This is heaven. Play some Zeppelin. Play stairway, douche. I'll hug people uncomfortably too long. I'll eat all the shrimp of the buffet. I'll pay with everything for pennies and coupons. Try to pick up all the women. Hey, Joan of Arc, you want to go out? No? Dyke, you don't want me in heaven. <laughs> Do you know what I admire about the 9-11 hijackers? <laughs> Their get up and go. See, <laughs> when I was young, I was in flight school. I had a job waiting for me, but I was too fucking lazy to go every day. These guys had nothing but a face full of flaming building waiting for them, and they went every single day. Admittedly, they got to skip the classes on landing, but they fucking went every day. <laughs> and you know why? Religion. That's the only thing that will motivate people to do batshit insane stuff like that. The weaponization of religion is positively fucking pornographic. The fact that someone would take someone's faith and use it to turn them into a killing machine is disgusting. Every major organized religion has had a terrorist act, except for Buddhism. And maybe they did. Maybe a guy with shaved head and robes on went into an olive garden and didn't order anything. I don't know how the fuck it works. <laughs> we just felt guilty because he only had water. You brought this on yourself, Jihad. I don't know. <laughs> But nobody does that for science. No one martyrs themselves for science. No one's jumping on a commuter bus with dynamite under their lab coat going, I saw Solis, it's the only true triangle. <laughs> I don't want to be in the club either. There's all these weird fucking rules like you can't have gay people in church. Why not? They're kneeling anyway. Fucking do it, come on! <laughs> gay church would be the best church. Every sermon would end with, oh man. It'd be fucking fantastic. Body of Christ, Christ what a body. Jesus was hung. Like I said, <laughs> Some guy said, he's like, why are you so pro-gay? I'm not pro-gay, okay? I'm anti-idiot. Because if you're a straight guy, you should love gay guys. The more gay guys, the better, because it's less competition for women, okay? Yeah, the last people you need out there competing for the attention of women are guys with 6% body fat, a good haircut, and the ability to listen. Are you out of your fucking minds? <laughs> I can't pretend to be interested in Downton Abbey and shoe shopping just the off chance of an awkward hand job when I drop her off at the mall. Thanks a lot, sweetheart. I'll wait in the car for you all day. Can you crack a window? Click now, bullets. Holy fuck, I want to die. It's simple. If you're in a race with one other guy and that guy's trying to fuck the guy with a starter pistol, you win the race by default, you dumb motherfucker. So stop making it hard for Tubby to get ladies. It's ridiculous, all right? I wish I was the only straight guy in the world because I ain't much to look at, but if I'm the only game in town, you better get in line and bring a casserole because my fucking stock price just went up. Apart from anything else, I, I, wish, I wish there were more gay guys. I'm actively trying to convert guys to being gay. I walk around with a big eight by 10 of a black dick in my pocket and go, what do you think? Maybe, maybe, we'll put you in the maybe categories. All right, yeah, hey, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's diversionary bullshit, right? The powers that be are trying to make us focus on who's fucking who so we don't realize they're fucking us. It's been going on for generations. There's nothing new about this bullshit. Flag burning, witchcraft. As soon as we get into ideas, we want legitimate answers about real fucking problems. Like, hey, where are polar bears and future and money and hope? They're like, those questions are legitimate questions. Those guys are happy, get them! And we go over here and they fuck up our future and it happens again and again and again. And a prime example of this bullshit is in America, America, in America, <laughs> where cult of soldiers supreme, they argued for years over gays in the military. Look, I don't know you people. You seem like nice people, but I would not take a bullet in the ass for you for a paycheck. You know why? I'm a fucking coward, all right? It's that simple. As far as I'm concerned, anybody who puts on the uniform deserves some basic fundamental fucking respect. No more conversation, no more discussion. You can't pick and choose your heroes by who mourns them when they die. Show me two coffins draped in flags. Tell me which one's the faggot with a straight face, because that's off the fucking table. In fact, if you gotta suck a dick before you fight terrorism, I'll hold the dick, motherfucker, all right? Because I'm a coward. And if the terrorists win, I've gotta run for my life or suck a dick. I mean, he's a bad, so it's blowjob town. So, you go get him, Semper Fag. I'll take care of your pink tank for you while you're out there doing the heavy lifting. Now, admittedly, it's hard to sneak up on people in the desert wearing glitter and listening to dance music. I know there will be problems. But half of these terrorists are religious nut jobs anyway. You really want to demoralize them? Let a homo kick their ass. That'll fuck them up for generations. They'll come back from Guantanamo. All broken spirited. I don't want to fight anymore, guys. You guys been on Pinterest? There's lots of good stuff on Pinterest. The Pope uh, came out and said, uh, fuck, this hat is heavy, I quit. <laughs> no, he came out and he said, uh, the Pope said a homosexual couple that adopts a child should consider that action child abuse. That's what he said. Homosexual couple that adopts a child should consider that action child abuse. What's that expression? People in glass houses shouldn't fuck kids. It's really simple, all right? 
And if you're Catholic, I'm not attacking you, but your management system is fucked. Because these rapist priests are not going to jail. They're just relocating them. So let me get this straight. You fucking kid, you go to prison. You fucking kid with a funny hat and a lowercase t on. You just go to Delaware. It's kind of like prison. But like still, like, hell. How easy going is the Pope as a boss? I don't know what your boss is like. I'm pretty sure if you show up late for work three days in a row, you'll probably get fired. Apparently, the Vatican, you can diddle the kid that reloads the photocopy, and the Pope's like, ha ha, Ray PP, it's up to his tricks again, vacation time. What the fuck? Where's the biblical justice? Where's an eye for a brown eye? Why can't we? Don't back off on me now. Why can't we? We should crucify the rapist police to larger rapist priests, and we'll do it during the Super Bowl. Have fireworks going off, get Home Depot to sponsor the nails. It'll be fucking great. Better than anything the Black Eyed Peas could cobble together, but no, we turn the other cheek. Pardon the pun. Look, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the Ten Commandments are, but I'm pretty sure don't fuck kids is implied. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Like, I know Moses didn't come down and go, look, guys, I didn't have time to write this shit on a brick, but, like, we all know don't fuck kids. Like, we all know not to fuck kids. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Like, like, I don't have to tell you. No, it's so cool. So you don't have to write it. Like, what the fuck? Like, it's so ridiculous. Here's how we solve the problem, right? And we also bonus uh, and make the Catholic Church allow us to use contraceptives is we lease a couple of choir boys with AIDS into the mix, and then we let, keep our eye out for the priests that get sleepy and lesiony, and those are the motherfuckers that go to jail, right? It's a very simple system. And I was doing that joke, and some guy stood up, he goes, hey! I go, what? He goes, I'm Catholic! I'm an attacking child rapist, not Catholic, so really fucking think before you open your mouth. And he goes, fair enough, and sat back down. <laughs> You cannot do that shit. Let he who is without whatever be the thing. <laughs> I did a lot of research for this joke. So I said to me, how come gay people get a parade and there's Chinese New Year parade? How come white straight guys don't get a parade? Well, for a couple of very good reasons. <laughs> One, a white straight male parade would be fucking boring. Yeah. Be just a bunch of guys in tearaway pants eating macaroni and cheese going, this is really fucking cheesy. And <laughs> The other reason white straight males can't have parades is because sometimes, just sometimes, when we white straight males, when we get together and have parades, shit gets out of hand and six million Jews go missing. We can't have anything nice! We can't have anything nice! It always starts out as a great idea. Let's wear the same thing so everyone knows we're on the same team. You want to go camping in Poland uninvited? That's why people get nervous when they see five white guys in the same outfit because they think we're up to something. And we usually fucking are. <laughs> when was the last time you saw five white guys in the same uniform? It wasn't a hockey game and anything went well that day. No, that is never a good sign. Look, I'm sick of hearing about gay marriage for two really good reasons. One, it's a basic human right. Let me alone. Gay people didn't fuck up the economy. They didn't gay down the towers on 9-11. There's no gay terrorists with sparklers and confetti, jihad mofo, pull. Like, stop it. Does this jihad make my ass look fatwa? You can tell me. Like, <laughs> and the other reason I don't want to hear about gay marriage every day is because maybe, just maybe, I'm not fucking anybody and I don't want to hear about people fucking every day on the news, all right? That is mean-spirited shit. That's like piping the food channel into Somalia. It's below the belt, stop it. <laughs> guy comes on, these guys are super happy and they're together and they want to be together forever because they're super happy and they love each other. I'm at home in the dark eating chicken. I want what they have. You can't have it, fatty! Tears. Look. <laughs> the way I look at it is like this. Anyone wants to touch your genitals, fucking let them. Because soon, you're going to be 90 years old, all dried out in a porch going, I wish I went into the woods with that homo. Just fucking do it. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Get some Jagermeister to wash the taste of cock out of your mouth and build a memory to tell the grandkids one day. Did you ever go to war, Grandpa? Not, but me and a black guy rotisserie this Cuban dude in the bushes one Pride weekend. Cheryl, get my puppets. I'm telling the stories again. It's a bullshit, stupid, ridiculous conversation. And I have found in my time that usually the most homophobic people are gay. Like there's this guy in the States named Ted Haggard was the leader of the evangelical super right-wing lobby. Hated gay people. He's like, gay people shouldn't be allowed to vote. Gay people shouldn't be allowed to get married like they're black or something. Oh yeah, because <laughs> if we change the word gay to black, all of a sudden we got a civil rights issue because there were no civil rights leaders for gay guys. There was no Martin Luther King Jr. who was like, I have a dream and it's oily. There was none of that shit. <laughs> There's no Rosa Parks for gay guys. You know why we have rights? Because Roscoe Parks sat on that dick at the front of the bus and they said, get off the dick, Roscoe, and he wouldn't get off the dick, and now we have a parade. <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> so he hated hate gay people. And they busted this guy for having a 12-year affair with a male prostitute, which is predictable and fantastic. And you know how they busted him? The prostitute ratted him out because he'd been paying the guy in meth. I don't want to tell you guys how to live your lives. You're obviously figuring out how to get drunk at the right time of day, which is all day. But if you're ever paying anyone for any service in meth, you're getting fucked on that service. That's what's going to happen right there. <laughs> hey, how long is it going to take to do the siding on my house? We did the siding on our house right now, man. We took your daughter apart. Anyway, so... <laughs> 
They bust this guy and they send him to gay rehab. How is that not a show on Fox? Wouldn't you fucking tune into gay rehab every week just to watch Tom Cruise try to get away from a dog catcher's van? I fucking love that show. He's making jean shorts. Put him in the hole. What kind of hole? Shut up, faggot. I love it. Cure being gay? Really? Okay, suppose they could. And all of a sudden, at 48 years old, after a lifetime of being gay, you're straight. But you still got the gay memories in your fucking head, right? Try to sleep at night with that shit rocking around in there. You're at the bar with your friends comparing scars. Oh, I fell off the tractor. Uh, I got a scar here because I fell on the rake. And uh, Laureline left the rake there. She said uh, she wouldn't leave the rake. And I got, I got a car. Oh, yeah, you got it. You got you got a scar, Dave, do you? Do you see that chip tooth? Six foot, nine inch tall black dude with a Prince Albert on the size of a tuna can. Fuck the tooth out of my hand in a porta potty during Folk Fest. Don't you turn your back on me. I got a head full of PTSD because of that goddamn pill. And it's a conversation that's never going to end, too. Because one in ten people are gay. One in nine people are left-handed. They say they're born that way, but it's a choice. Put the pen in the other hand, freak show. So, <laughs> looking for attention for your weirdo. Left-handed lifestyle. Left-handed people say they want to marry other left-handed people now. What hand do I put the ring on? Is this legal? Can I marry a unicorn? I don't fucking know. I worked with a guy who was left-handed. I went into work one day. The mouse was on the wrong side of the keyboard. I fucking threw up. I had to go home, okay? All polar bears are left-handed. That shit's on the internet, if it isn't put it on right now. All polar bears, left-handed. Osama bin Laden was left-handed. Left-handed people are fucking polar bear terrorists. Why are we not dealing with this shit? And they're like, Simon, what does it matter to you if left-handed people want to marry other left-handed people? How does that affect you, the common, normal, right-handed person who is not an abomination in the eyes of the Lord? Well, what you don't understand is that if left-handed people are allowed to marry left-handed people, they're going to raise their fucking kids left-handed. Yeah. And then shit's gonna change for the norms. All of a sudden, 20, 30 years now, you're shaking hands with the wrong hand. Is this hello or goodbye? I don't know. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to backwards land. What is going on? Why am I driving on the wrong side of the road now? Because you didn't fucking vote. That's why you didn't fucking vote. Left-handed people say they want equal rights. Well, they're called rights, not left, not job. So stop trying to get us to sign up to your alternative fucking lifestyle. I need a special kind of can opener. Get out of my country, freak show. Right power. <laughs> You have to enunciate the R on that pretty hard. Uh, otherwise, someone always walks in and goes, ooh, wrong meeting, and fucking leaves. I love stand-up comedy. It's one of my favorite, favorite things in the world because stand-up comedy is one of the last true free open art forms. It really is. There's no censorship. There's nothing between me and you guys. And that doesn't mean we're always going to agree. That's not the way humans work. When was the last time you met a room full of strangers and you agreed on everything? That's not how we grow. That's not how we learn. But I believe as long as you don't say anything you don't believe or can't defend, you should be able to talk about anything, right? That's the way it works. That's the beauty of it. There's always going to be people who are uncomfortable. But eventually, by the end of the night, everyone leaves with something that you want, and that's the great thing. But there are people who use stand-up comedy to spread ignorance to the ignorant, to spread hate to the hateful, to sell that, to make money off that. And that absolutely fucking disgusts me. And you don't even realize they're doing it. Like they hide, like they do it like pup. Have you seen this Jeff Dunham with this acme that had terrorist fucking puppet? You can't just say racist shit through a puppet and then it's not racist shit, fucked hard. Like we know it's you saying it, right? Like I know there's some guy in Alabama going, I don't know about the guy behind him, but I like what that puppet has to say. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Fuck, I voted for a puppet for eight years. I'd do it again. Like I can't. <laughs> I can't. Open and close the door of a microwave and say homophobic shit. It'd be like, it ain't me, it's the homophobic microwave. Faggot! Calm down, homophobic microwave. Why don't you watch Two Man Lose? You need a hot dog in the bath, you fucking faggot. Oh, homophobic microwave. What's next? The anti Semitic blender? Juice! You can't do it. Stop it. Use the art. So I spend a lot of time in America, because if you'd like to get famous, you kind of have to go there. That's the way it works. Because uh, in America, they like to call themselves the greatest country in the world, which is only frustrating if you live in the world. That's the only time. <laughs> it's a fucking problem. But they are super passionate. Like, it's the greatest country in the world right here. This is the greatest country in the world. I wish I could fuck it. It's the best country. Like, if they yell it enough, they'll believe it. In the meantime, 50 million people don't have health insurance. You're going to jail for 30 years for an ounce of marijuana, and Honey Boo Boo exists. This is not the greatest country in the world, you fucking moron. You can't just yell it. You have to prove it. That's like me going, six pack abs. It's not fucking true. All right? I can't just walk around the mall with a half shirt and eating a Big Mac going, I'm in great shape, motherfucker. Okay, yeah, but you got to get out of baby gap because you're freaking people out. Like, 
they market the country to themselves. Like they, they're really into the public. They, they put American flags on everything. I think they forget where they are half the time. I think it's like <laughs> some sort of old school hillbilly GPS where they're driving along and they're like two taco stands in a row. Did I drive to Mexico? I did it again. There we go. There we go. Oh, America. I just go home and wrap themselves up in their stars and stripes comforter. It's 1961. None of this is happening. Everything is fine. And, <laughs> That's the problem with America, right? Like, it's the gluttony of the country. Americans believe that people hate them because they have things, but they don't. They hate them because they flaunt things, right? And I get heavy is the head that wears the crown, but it's a gluttonous country by nature. They have a thing in America called competitive eating. Competitive eating, but it's not competitive. It's nine guys with enough food for 90 guys. Real competitive eating is 16 sub-Saharan Africans and one chicken. But you, <laughs> but you won't see that on TV because it upsets people during Ellen. So they bury their head in the sand and don't understand that the way they behave is like a rich guy that goes into a bar, a rich white dude that goes into a bar and goes, hey, I'm the richest motherfucker out in here, yo. Uppercuts a brown midget with his cock, takes everyone's wallet and doesn't understand why people key his PT Cruiser. You cannot <laughs> behave like that. Don't get me wrong, I do like Americans. But to me, Americans are a little bit like children. Individually, they're great, but in a group, they're fucking irritating. <laughs> like when they're yours, they're fine. But too many of them get together, they start getting ideas in their head, they feed off their own energy, you go out for 20 minutes, you come back, there's a Walmart in your backyard. You're like, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> You cannot call yourself the greatest country in the world when there's so many fucking families live on the streets because of poverty, where people lose their homes because they get sick, right? Where the gap between rich and poor is essentially insurmountable. Where at 18 in California, you can vote, go to war and do porn, but you can't drink. I'm gonna repeat that last one because that last one's really important. <laughs> at 18 in California, you can vote, go to war, do porn, but you can't drink. Let me tell you this, if I gotta pick a government that's gonna fuck up my future, I gotta kill some brown dude to make Halliburton even richer, and I gotta take six dicks on camera, I'm gonna need a fucking Jagermeister, okay? <laughs> And six dicks is too many dicks. Like, I don't know what you owe the mob, but you should never have more dicks than you have spaces for dicks. That's what your mama taught you. That's a dick surplus, which is my porn name, by the way. That's a very bad place to be. I can't decide if my, if my porn name is dick surplus or sticky Gervais. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> they are terrified of porn. They sell the fuck out of sex, but they're terrified of it. Like, there's a guy running for president on the last election cycle. He's running on the platform of banning pornography. Yeah, now you're quiet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ban pornography? Really, ban porn, really. You think you got a lot of guys living in the woods with guns now. Fuck. <laughs> Take porn off the table, watch a society cave in. Have you ever hung out with a dude who hasn't had a chance to empty the stock room for a few weeks? They get twitchy and stabby and murdery. Why do you think so much terrorism comes from countries where there is no porn? Let me get this straight, it's hot as fuck. I have an AK-47 and I can see this much of a woman? Oh yeah, this'll end fine. Like, <laughs> That's why terrorism rarely comes from countries where they have liberal attitudes towards sexuality. Because as soon as Sven starts to get twitchy about the government, you send him down the red light district and someone with crazy forearm strength and low self-esteem tugs him up for five euro, all of a sudden those traffic cameras ain't that big of a fucking deal. You wanna calm down terrorism? Carpet bomb the Middle East with some girl on girl DVDs. That shit'll go away overnight. Like, I'd love to take part in the jihad, but this scene with the shampoo bottle will blow your minds. And dick surplus is in the next one, and I can't jihad twice a day like when I was under 50. Ackman dose, high five, there he goes. <laughs> they sell you sex, but they don't give you access to it. They sell you violence, and it's everywhere. It's easier to buy a gun than a contraceptive in some states. Admittedly, a gun is a contraceptive, it's just extremely late term. But the point is, <laughs> But that's the thing. Like they, they're terrible. Like it's, prostitution's only legal in like one or two. You should, prostitution shouldn't be legal. It should be mandatory. All right. Like, when was the last time you went at the bank to get a loan? And that sour-faced old man with that like translucent white skin, with a pursed little anus mouth and the too tight grease suit. He's in a shit mood because no one's touched him with the fun part of their body in 20 years. So he's not going to give you any money because you're going to use it by Gorvette and get fucked in an alleyway. As you should. It's a free country. But imagine if you got him 20 minutes after his mandatory Wednesday blowjob. He'd throw open the gates to the vault like Willy Wonka at the factory. Help yourself to money, my friends. It's Blowjob Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. You want to fix the economy? Two words, Blowjob Wednesday. That's how you do it. No one ever call in sick for work ever again because what if they invented hand job Mondays on the weekend? I got to go find out. Second of all, you have guys showing up for work that don't even fucking work there. <laughs> like, hey, I'm Bob. I'm going to load the forklift. Did I hire you, Bob? You know what? This one's on me because it's blowjob Wednesday. See you in the lunchroom at noon. Bring them up. High five. But they won't do it. <laughs> one of the things they love to do sometimes occasionally is blame their economy on foreigners. That's great. Blame a guy comes on TV. 
fucking foreigners come here taking all the good jobs. Shit. I'd like a good job, but the foreigners take all the good jobs. All the good jobs, fuck. <laughs> Them go to foreigners. Really? That's the job you wanted, Flevis? Cleaning bodily fluids off the bedspread at the Super 8? That's not the job you wanted, fucked hard. It's the job you turned down because you saw it as beneath you. If I recall correctly, Americans had a nasty habit of importing foreigners on boats for hundreds of years to do the jobs they wouldn't lower themselves. And they're like, I can't get a job because these fucking foreigners. And you can't get a job because you're a rest record, poor hygiene, and inability to show up on time, okay? Maybe it's not Gurmeet, Sanchez, or Chan's fault you're broke. Maybe it's your fault you're broke. He's a six kids with dirty ski jackets and runny noses because you haven't figured out how to fucking pull out once in a while. Maybe it's not someone else's fault you don't have shit. Maybe it's your fault you don't have shit. Take some personal responsibility. Put that Second Amendment right under your chin. Pull the trigger and Sanchez will get a job digging the fucking hole they put you in. I am so tired of this blame, everybody. And then they go, why do they keep coming here? Why do foreigners keep coming here? I don't know. Maybe stop calling it the greatest country in the world, you fucking moron, and they'll leave you alone. It's ridiculous. It's like standing outside of a nightclub and this is the place you want to be. Not for you, brown shoes. Everybody else. You don't want people to come to your country, show off your flaws. Put up a billboard between Los Angeles and Tijuana that says America is a country where democracy is essentially controlled by the banks. And maybe every third Mexican family will be like, you know what, fuck this, the drug wars are better. That's all I say. <laughs> And when it gets to the end of the conversation, what do they say? What's the catch-all? No matter what happens, when the scotch is drunk and the sun comes up, what do they say? Well, you can say what you want, but it's a free country. It's a free country. Really? Go jerk off in a mall. It's not a free country. It's not a free country. They're looking at your emails, listening to your phone calls, telling you who you can marry, what you can smoke, what you can some Halliburton, Walmart, Goldman Sachs, McDonald's keeps trying to assassinate people. Why do people think the terrorist is a guy in a cave with a beard? It's Ronald McDonald. And the weapon of mass destruction is the fucking McRib. Shows up every few years, covered in enough barbecue sauce to drown your dreams of making it past 50. Da 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 da! We're fucked. <laughs> My brother uh, just had a baby. No. <laughs> I hate babies. Babies are like rich midgets. They just do whatever they want and everyone's fine with that bullshit. If your roommate shits himself on the couch, he does not get to be your roommate anymore and he pays rent. But a baby does it and it's adorable. Why? Because it's small and bald, so's Danny DeVito, but he can't get away with that shit. And if you have a kid, you know your whole job for the first few years of his life is to stop it killing itself. You just have to follow around and go, don't eat that. Don't put that in your mouth. Stop it. Hang it. It's like hanging out with an emo kid 24-7. It's fucking ridiculous. Uh, I hear Morrissey coming through the baby monitor. I better get in there. This one could be a cutter. No, no, that's bullshit. No. It's not an accomplishment simply to have a child. It's an accomplishment to raise an adult. It's not an accomplishment to have a child. I passed a car the other day on the street, and in the back window, there was it wasn't even a baby on board. It was a drive careful, expectant mom to be. Fuck you! Just because you haven't figured out how to throw the right amount of pills down your fucking neck doesn't mean that I have to pump my brakes. All right, that's bullshit. You don't get a pat on the back for that shit. And you're careful, don't pat yourself on the back too hard because you might miscarry and have to get a different sign. Fuck you! I am so tired of that bullshit. All right, you didn't do anything. All happened is someone forgot to fucking pull out or you spent a bunch of money. Like, I don't fucking give a shit. All right, that's not an accomplishment. Be a person before you have a child. All right, that's the way it works. Having a kid is not a big deal. Raising a great adult is a fucking huge deal. All right? The way, if you have a sign like that, if you have a baby on board or expect a mom to be on board in the back of your car, you should have to pay three times as much for traffic fines. Because if you want to be special, now you're fucking special. All right? I'm tired of that bullshit. I will respect you if I see a sign in the back of your car that said, caution, proud mother of a 30-year-old young lady who recently got her master's degree is traveling Europe with a, a, a respectful and decent companion, learning some new languages, and is going to come back and work for an NGO and help women's rights. Then you'll get a fucking pat on the back and a bottle full of Jameson. But until you accomplish something like that, go fuck yourself. We're ridiculous. We live on a planet where the Octomom continues to exist. She's still out there with a working uterus. No one's held her down with a microwave with no door in it over stomach and press popcorn four times to solve the problem. First of all, Octomom sounds like someone who fights Spider-Man. Oh no, it's the Octomom. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, she had 14 kids. 14 people came out of one lady. That section of the audience came out of one vagina, right? Really think about that next time you're 15th in line for something. 14 kids, she didn't fuck anybody. She went to a downstairs Mexican medical clinic, got filled up with fetuses from a caulking gun. I'll tell you crazy bitch, this is going to fill the hole in your soul. She's crazy, but the checks are clearing. 14 kids! Now we can assume coyotes will eat a couple of them, but it's too many. 
We cannot outbreed the stupid people. For every one kid, smart people have idiots have ten. Cletus is out there right now with a foam finger on that says number one dad just fucking going, baby Jeffrey, Mari Povich pays for him. We can't beat him. <laughs> the only way to win the war against stupid people is to stop making laws that stop them from killing souls. No more helmet laws, no more seatbelt laws. One fence between you and the panda bear at the zoo because if you can't figure out the operative part of panda bear is bear, you're a fucking sandwich and that's the way nature intended, all right? <laughs> Knives are sharp, coffee will burn your junk off. If life is too hard, kindly leave, we need the parking. I am tired of catering to people who can't simple out the basic fundamental. We have so many warning signs on everything. I saw a warning sign on the door the other day, said, caution, automatic door. Why? That's one of the good robots. Like some guy walk up to it at the door because, ah, fuck witchcraft. No, it's a door. <laughs> We should go the other way. We should have giant open threshing machines in every major nightclub district like that just get cranked on at 3 a.m. with a case of Bud Light Lime in front of it. And then some dipshit with a chain over his t-shirt who can't operate a baseball cap wanders out and goes, holy shit, free... <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> We're running out of shit, guys. We have 12 years of tigers left on the planet Earth, and that's it. I didn't even know they measured tigers in years. I figured it was leaders, but we're done. Like, if we run out of tigers in 12 years, that's it. They're gone. If we run out of tigers in 12 years, how are your grandchildren going to know what cereal is great? They won't. They'll just be eating and be like, these are good. You have no idea. And I know you're like, thank God the white straight male living in North America is here to tell us all about the troubles in the world. Like, I know that by being in this room, we're the 1% of people on the planet that actually has shit. Like, you live in a very good continent. You know how you know that? You're not on fire right now. And unless you fuck up with the oven, you probably won't be on fire tomorrow. Like, you have a good chance of not being on fire unless you do it to yourself, right? And that doesn't mean you don't have legitimacy in your rage. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't have real problems because they want to keep you just thankful enough for the little thing you have, the shrinking iceberg that you have so that you don't fight back. Like they say, first world problems. Sometimes it's legitimate. If you drop your iPhone in a toilet, first world problems. You know, you can't play your video games or whatever. And you have to actually ask people as opposed to Googling shit. And you go, the mm, iPhone's gone. But like, yeah, first world problems. But just because we have running water and teeth doesn't mean we don't have, like, yeah, first world, like, we're essentially a working slave class kept pacified by thousands of channels and spinning rims and fucking video games. So we don't realize the gap between rich and poor is getting insurmountable. And the bankers have taken everything and stolen all our resources. And the world is being taken apart so rich people can get rich and they're telling us that every time we fight back, we're going to lose what we have. So first world problems, but let me tell you this, I'd rather fight a lion than the bank, because at least when you're done fighting a lion, you're either dead or wearing a lion. But the bank <laughs> will systematically dry fist you in the ass for 35 years for everything you thought you were buying until you finally get sick and need cancer medication and have to get a reverse mortgage, and the bank fucking takes it all back again. At no point during a fight with a lion does a lion go, you know, if you're interested in other lion fighting services, I can have a different lion come over and offer you shit you don't need for the rest of your life. Sure, you're missing an arm, but you own your own hut. So don't tell me first world fucking problems. Having said that, I was gonna do the Cape Town Comedy Festival and I can't imagine selling my self-righteous, indignant white guy rage in Africa. <laughs> I can't even imagine how stand-up comedy works in Africa. A guy just gets out there to start the show. Hey, how's everyone doing tonight? My brother was eaten by a leopard. <laughs> okay. Anybody from out of town? <laughs> My feet hurt every day, but please tell us of your problems, fat man. We all want to hear about the bus. Like, I understand. <laughs> Like, they have legitimate problems in Africa. It's called the African dickworm, funny story. It's a parasite that goes in your foot, hangs around one day, probably at a dinner party with your boss, comes out of your dick. <laughs> what the fuck? Look, I don't care how bad you think your day was. I don't care if your car broke down and your stapler jammed. Unless you have an African dickworm, you can never say fuck my life ever again. It's a fucking dickworm! All right, next time your friends think like, this phone's a piece of shit, just knock on his head and go, dickworm, and run away. Because there ain't shit you can say to dickworm. Hey, boss, I got a call in sick. Let me guess, you got the flu? I got a dickworm. Never coming again ever. You're fucking fired. <laughs> no one wants you here. You're going to wreck Blowjob Wednesday for everybody. Nobody wants you. <laughs> How many people hate their job? <coughs> oh, fuck off. Really? Not one honest person? Really? You all making boat payments? <laughs> How many people hate their job? <laughs> all right, great. And if you like your job, if you love your job, if your job fulfills you, if it's something you like, that is fantastic, that's wonderful, you're very lucky, you won the proverbial lottery, this joke is not for you. <laughs> but if you hate your job, listen to me very closely. Stop going. 
Now that's easy to say. That's easy to say. But being unemployed is awesome. You know that job you go to where everyone treats you like crap and you don't have a chance to say anything, but you have to go there every day? Yeah, you don't have to go again. Yay! You know, food? You can't have it. Boo. So there's a problem. Like, <laughs> being broke sucks. But like, that's the thing is like, if you, if you hate your job, you shouldn't like, you don't have a lot of time, right? You think you do, particularly when you're young, you think that you're never gonna really catch that horizon, but you don't. You know, spring, summers, winters, fall, they come quickly. You, you know, you only have about 40 years where you're not shitting or drooling uncontrollably. Because the first 20 years, you're like, I don't know what I wanna be. And the last 20 years, you're like, I'm a potato. So that, <laughs> 40 years in the middle is the good shit. Do not give up your life for pieces of paper with numbers on it. Every dollar you earn should have a picture on it of what you had to do to earn it so you value your time more. Every $20 bill should be you sitting in traffic or standing at a jam photocopier or drinking that weak ass break room coffee because Janice doesn't know how to make the coffee with two cups, but you're supposed to make it with two cup loads of things, Janice. You're the point is, like, every paycheck should have how many hours you have left on Earth till the natural termination of a life of a human being. So instead of waiting at 65 to retire, you retire at 45. Go live in a beach in Thailand, weave mats for the locals, and smoke a block of hash the size of a nine-year-old. That's what you should be doing with your time. That's what you should be doing with your time. Because the reality is the system is not set up for you to achieve. It's set up to keep you just happy enough not to fight back. That's the way it works. You have just enough things not to know. Would it be I have a dream if he had a PlayStation? Probably not, because it takes a fuck of a long time to prestige your weapons. Right? You have to learn to fight back. And it's not even your fault, because when you're a kid, they lie to you and tell you you can be anything you want. They tell you you can be a race car driver, or an actor, or the president, but they don't tell you the bad shit. They never tell you about the crushing student debt, and the fear, and the uncertainty, and the heartbreak. It's false advertising. It's like how you never see any crying in a beer commercial. You know, every beer commercial is always like, beer is awesome. It's never some guy behind a dumpster going, Corona. So, you know, <laughs> every beer commercial is like, we're young, let's get drunk at the beach. It's never like some lady shaking in a mobile home with a black eye while her tub of shit husband sits in the back and go, I told you to shut up while Charlie Sheen was being funny, bitch. Crunch. It's never that. So we fall for it, right? So when you're six years old, you put in a cardboard box and go, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be an astronaut. You run around, you bang your head and shit, go, I want to be an astronaut. You're going to be an astronaut. And when you're 16, they go, you don't have the math to be an astronaut. And you go, fuck, I want to be a rock star. I'm going to get a guitar. I'm going to John Mayer this shit. I want to be a fucking rock star. And when you're 20, they go, you don't have the looks to be a rock star. And you go, fuck, I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to By the time you're in your 30s, you're like, I want a barbecue. <laughs> because they steal from you every day. Every day we lose ground. And every day we accept it. Like, you know that feeling in your chest you get where you don't feel good and you don't know why? And it lasts a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Finally, you go see a doctor and the doctor goes, you're sick. You're depressed, you need lorazepam and Effexor and Zoloft and Paxil. You're not sick, you're normal. Because this is wrong. This is all wrong. You shouldn't have to put up with the day-to-day -day shit. When that woman comes into work, goes, this latte, only under 45 degrees, splits me in 48. It's really weird, like I usually get what I want. You have to smile at her and remit. You should be able to throw shit at her and climb a vine and swing off, but you can't. You can't. Because Timmy needs braces and the car needs brakes. Everyone in here should be able to throw shit at one asshole once a year, no questions asked. <laughs> You want to fix the world, that's how you do it. No one will cut in front of line in front of anybody again because it's not December. What if they haven't thrown shit at anybody yet, you know? Old people will get respect because they got a turd hanger and strapped to their fucking leg. It's going to be hard to get heckled as a comic, but I'll take that chance. I'll take that chance. That's the thing, right? That's the, the, when did the flag of surrender go from being white on a pole to a pair of khakis hanging out the window of a minivan with those stick figures on the back to tell you how many fucking people are on board? What happened to us? What happened to us? We're so easily distracted. People are going on the internet now and begging for money. They're going on the internet and going, if you guys could YouTube me, like PayPal me a dollar, like, what, sell the camera, fuck, what, like really, like what's next? A homeless guy with a sign that says, follow me on Twitter? Is that what's next? I don't know what a homeless guy's Twitter would be, but like, drugs, drugs, hashtag hash. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I know the only difference between me and a crazy guy is the microphone. Like, I know you take the mic out of my hand, you put me on any major downtown street, I'm just a guy walking around going, the sun's a piece of shit, America sucks, all people fall over, dickworm! If you give me a microphone, it's an entertainment option. So, I have to get going, but I'll tell you this before I go, because I'm very fortunate that I get to do stand-up comedy for a living, and I get to see a lot of people, I get to go a lot of places which is amazing, and I, what I've learned is we're all essentially on the same page. They're gonna tell you you're not. They're gonna tell you you're divided more than you are because it's easier to fight us when we're divided, but you're not really, that. most people are basically saying, most people just don't want anybody to get hurt. Except the stabby guy, he's like, I like to stab. Well, you don't get to come to the meetings. Like, that's easy. <laughs> But they're gonna tell you you're, 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 you're liberal or conservative. They're gonna tell you this or that. Most people aren't. Most people are basically the same. Most people are. But what they wanna do is define your identity for you. Like, take one second 
to think how many numbers are associated with your name, right? How many? Like phone numbers, mortgage numbers, house numbers, email passwords, credit card numbers, credit scores. Just think of that. Think of how much you're identified by a series of numbers, right? And that's why they try and do that thing. They go, that identity theft, identity theft. They're after your identity. No, nope, they're after your money. And if money's your identity, you're fucking dead inside. So stop letting people tell you who you are based on your bank balance. Most of us are smart enough to know that we're worth more than a series of numbers on a computer screen, but that does appeal to those people who really did sell themselves down the line to get the two-car garage and the perfect credit. They're terrified. They're absolutely terrified because they're, oh, they're, that's all they know. That's all their value is that they're after your identity. Oh, fuck, they're after my identity. Nobody wants your identity, dude. You work at a urinal supply company who drive a four-door beige Corolla with roll-up windows because you wouldn't want power ones because you might pinch your finger and fucking feel alive for five minutes. You're married to a woman with sad eyes and a dishpan complexion who fucks you once a year on your anniversary and is more likely to put a loaded gun in her mouth than your cock. You have two kids, one with a lazy eye, but he won't wear his eye patch because all the hillbillies call him faggoty pirate. And your six-year-old, she doesn't speak yet. Her form of social disobedience is to shit her pants at church. Nobody wants your identity, dude. You don't have an identity. You gave up your identity when you chose to be a toothless cog in a fucking vanilla machine. But the funny thing is when that guy loses identity, when his identity gets stolen, now he's the guy at work whose identity got stolen. That's his identity. Now we can finally open his head at that wooden block party and instead of telling the same stupid, same basic story about how he got that beige girl with only 36,000 miles, pretty good deal, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, people wanted my hot wife and my one-eyed kid so bad I had to change my pin number on my birthday. Fuck you, liberal Democrats. No, okay, no. I don't know you people, but I'm pretty sure you're worth more than a series of numbers on a computer screen. Your identity is not your bank balance. It's a quick big toe on your left foot. The time you fucked up your friend's couch moving. The mistake you made in Thailand with the lady with the deep voice and the broad shoulders. That's your fucking identity. Your identity is the color of your eyes and the shit you have seen with him. I don't know you people, but I'm pretty sure you're with whether a visa bill, a mortgage payment, or a goddamn credit score. Try to remember that once in a while. My name is Simon King. Good night. Okay.